One of the things that we've lost a little bit uh, in the Church of England over the last 20 or 30 years is the capacity to retain prayer, phrases, parts of Scripture. And the reason uh, for that partly is because the prayer book we now have, Common Worship, comes in multiple volumes. One of its predecessors, the one that many people have still a great love for, the Book of Common Prayer, came in one book. One year cycle of readings and prayers. And was easily digestible. If I'm going to uh, an elderly person who may be in their last days and I start to pray with them, perhaps the third collect for Even's song, uh, Light in Our Darkness, Lord, the chances are is that they'll be able to recite it with me. The Book of Common Prayer gave ordinary people a lot of resources to pray with, and it became very familiar, and it became rooted in who they are. Now, we're now in a, a time where we have more choice. So common worship gives us all sorts of alternatives. We have a three-year cycle of readings. So those prayers don't lodge within us perhaps as much as they once did. But what does stay with us are those prayers, those psalms that touch our hearts. And we have one such today with the 23rd psalm. I'm sure it's one that you are all familiar with, and if you weren't, you should be by now, because we've heard it and we've sung it. So, and our next uh, hymn also draws on themes from it. But it's a very popular psalm, and its very popularity means that we can sometimes miss out on what it's trying to to tell us. If you're anything like me, I have the attention span of a gnat. Sometimes, when I'm praying the Lord's Prayer, I'll start off very strongly with our Father in Heaven and get to our men and not be able to remember what I've done in the meantime, because I'm so familiar with it, it comes out automatically, so I don't engage with it prayerfully if my mind is distracted. And the same with something like the 23rd Psalm. We sing hymns based on it. We often have it at, at funerals. We see it on prayer cards. But one of the things I love about that Psalm is the challenge that it gives to us. You might think it's a Psalm about comfort. Isn't it nice? The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He'll lead me beside green pastures and all the rest of it. That's lovely, isn't it? But actually, the challenge comes in the middle. Because it says specifically, though I walk through a valley of deepest darkness, though I walk through a valley of deepest darkness. Sorry, one of the church wardens going to the port. We've got somebody coming in. Thank you. Um, sorry, we're, we're having a lot of problems with people wanting to use the toilets, so we need to be safeguarding the, the front of the church, so I apologise for that. Though I walk in the valley of deepest darkness, what's that about? Well, it's not I'm going for a walk and suddenly I come to a bit which is a bit shady. This is about who we are and our experience of life. Though I walk in the valley of deepest darkness, I wonder what that means for you. Could it be the darkness of bereavement, the darkness of illness, the darkness of depression, the darkness of broken relationships? All of those things, all the darkness that we experience in our life, the psalmist says, Though I walk through the valley of deepest darkness, not just any valley, the valley of deepest darkness, 
In that time, I will fear no ill. Now that's quite challenging. As we know, when we're in those times of bereavement, illness, depression, broken relationships, we can be in a very difficult place. Very difficult for us to see our way out or to understand how our relationships with one another and with God can be truly experienced. But the psalmist says, hang on, hang on. Though you walk through the valley of deepest darkness, I am with you. My rod and my staff, they comfort you. So there's something about the nature of God which even in the dark places of our lives is present. And though we may not experience that presence, presence as immediately as sometimes we may, the psalmist says there's a gentle touch. My rod and my staff, they comfort you. Someone walking just behind us, just alongside us, saying, hold on. It's difficult, but I am with you. And where, I wonder, are we prepared to be led as we go through that valley? Well, the psalm gives us a very strong clue right at the beginning. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He will lead me into the valley, and into the meadows of his repose, and by the streams of his living water. That wonderful image. Though I walk through the deepest darkness, he's with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me to the meadows of his repose and to the waters of his peace. But this is a realistic psalm. It's not something which says, here we are, isn't it lovely? And it's going to remain lovely for all the rest of time. What God does with these words, with this poetry, is to give us an assurance that there is an oasis, a place where we may be still and find refreshment in his love. But it's not an absolute place. It's not the place we can stay in necessarily the rest of our lives. But it's a place where we draw strength, where we have a vision of God's deep love and refreshment and hope that can inspire us. So then, when we're led back into that dark valley, when something else happens, we have that vision of something which holds us and gives us energy and hope. And the Lord is there in both places. And as that cycle goes on, our deepest darkness, the Lord is trying to take us to a place of refreshment and hope. And when we begin that journey again, that cycle again, we have something behind it which says, it's okay, God is with me. The familiarity of the psalm can dent our understanding of what it means for us. And with any scripture, with any of the psalms, with any of the hymns and prayers that we use. It's worth taking time just to jump into them and to wander around in them a bit and see what message, what words of love God wants us to hear there. The prayers we use now may not lodge so much in our memory as they once did. But I'm sure you all have bits of prayers, bits of scripture, 
which are there, lodging in the depths of your soul, that God is drawing your attention to and saying, think about what this means for you. If you remember it, it has meaning for you. Pay attention to it. And with the 23rd Psalm, experience its comfort and its hope and its words of deep love, but experience too what it says about who we are as people, as human beings, in the reality of where we live and who we are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.